Let's now move on to our fifth and final main topic of the day. And our fifth and final main topic today gets sent in to us from Sammy Douglas, who writes, Greetings and salutations, everyone. We're always talking about how movie attendance has been going down every year little by little, but I just read an article on Cinema Blend that reports AMC is showing an actual increase of movie attendance this year over last year. Do you think that's a fluke or a sign that things are turning around? Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Sammy. And yes, one of the unfortunate realities of the theatrical movie going experience these days (coughs) is that fewer and fewer people year over year are actually going to the movies. Now, it's not huge drops, but every year, little by little, fewer and fewer people are going. And we mask that by celebrating big box office records. But of course, a lot of those box office records and you know, come as a result of the increase in the ticket price and stuff like that, because we have a bigger t- percentage of ticket price increases than we did for the percentage of lost people actually coming to the movies. But still, year over year for years now, fewer and fewer people have been going to the movies. I don't know if maybe a half hour of trailers before a movie starts has something to do with it or the price of movie tickets, or what have you, but it's been the case. But movie theater industry has, over the past couple of years, really been working hard. AMC is a good example of it. Regal is too, of trying to improve, in some ways, the movie-going experience. For instance, a lot of AMC theaters now, all leather recliners, making it a very comfortable experience to go and watch. Things like uh, the AMC Burbank 16 now have the prime theaters, the Dolby cinemas, these dual laser projection systems with immersive Dolby Atmos sound and all this kind of stuff. You got other chains with like 4DX technology and blah. And then you got specialty places like an Alamo Draft House or an iPick Theater that give you luxury experiences where with chairs that don't just recline, like they fully lay out and they bring you dinner to your table and drinks and a blanket if you want one, uh, refillable popcorn, just hit a button. I mean, they have been doing a lot to try to make going to the theaters as an enjoyable experience as possible. And my hat's off to them for doing that because I'm enjoying these things. I'm enjoying them a lot. And then you got AMC that came out with their A-list program last year. They came out with their A-list program, which I've been saying is the best thing to ever happen to film fans that go to more than one movie a month. It's amazing. Has all this stuff been working? There are still problems like the price of going to the movies, the, the amount of trailers that play. Like, I'm sorry, a couple of trailers is fine. A half hour of trailers? Come on. But still, there are still problems. But it looks like maybe all of these initiatives might starting to be pay off. This might be starting to pay off. This is from the report in Cinnamon Blend. For the third quarter of the company's fiscal year, 87.1 million tickets were sold at AMC theaters. That number of tickets sold represents a quarterly record for the exhibition giant, reflecting an increase in attendance at its theaters around the globe. Concession, now this is important, we'll talk about this in a second, but this is important. Get this, lock this away in your head right now. Concession revenue was also up year over year, rising from $384.8 million to $420 million. Guys, That's like a $35 million increase in concession revenue, which is, of course, also directly connected to the fact that it has more people coming into the theaters. More people come into the theaters, the more people buy concessions. And movie theaters don't make their money on movie tickets because most of that money goes back to the studios and the distributors. Movie theaters make their money on concession stand. That's how they keep their doors open. So for the first time in a while, we're seeing a major theater chain, AMC in this case, reporting an actual increase in the amount of people coming to theaters, buying tickets, and more importantly for them, buying concession stands. (coughs) Prices. Let me raise a side note here about AMC A-List. Because a lot of people have always asked me, John, why should we believe that AMC A-List can work when MoviePass didn't? Like, you always said MoviePass was doomed to fail because just it wasn't a financially reasonably sound It wasn't a good business model. It wasn't going to work. Well, how come you think AMC's will? And I've always said for two reasons. Number one, they're charging more 
than MoviePass did. They're charging double what MoviePass did. MoviePass was trying to tell you that they could, for 10 bucks a month, you can go see unlimited movies, which turned out to be a giant lie. But still, AMC is charging double that. So that's, that's one thing right there. But the other thing, and this was the important one, was unlike MoviePass, which had no other way to generate revenue once somebody bought a movie ticket, for AMC theaters, and now Regal and other theater chains that do their uh, subscription services, AMC theaters only starts making money <laughs> once you come into the theater. So, okay, you, you get your ticket with your AMC A-list, great. That's where MoviePass stopped. But now AMC, now that you're in our theater, you're going to spend money in our theater. You're going to buy a soda. You're going to buy, if you're some sick, twisted individual, some raisins to put in your popcorn. I remember Clark Gregg did that with me once, and I still, I was shocked. Shocked, I tell you. But then I found out a whole bunch of people do that. So whatever, you sickos. Anyway, people come into the theater, and they, they'll, they'll buy commemorative cups, and they'll buy, uh, you know, oh, this uh, Avengers Endgame tin like big tin popcorn holder, I'll buy that. Or though now AMC's even got Funko Pops and a number of their theaters at the checkout lines. People, oh, I'm going to buy this Funko Pop. I'm going to buy a soda. I'm going to buy some popcorn. And <clears throat> yes, they charge double the price for their membership. But the key thing was always that AMC was going to make more money once the people came in. And that we see right there in the bottom two lines. Concession revenue. As a result of more people coming to the theaters, which I also believe is partly because of AMC A-List, more people come into the theaters now because of A-List, and by getting them into the theaters, they're spending more money at the concessions to the tune of almost a rise of $35 million in concession revenue. That was the big difference between what Regal is doing with Unlimited, what uh, AMC is doing with A-List, and what movie pass was trying to scam us all with that's the big difference and that's why movie pass was trying to blackmail movie theaters like amc and regal into cutting them in on a portion of their concession sales to which amc and regal said uh how about no that was their response is this a good thing oh absolutely this is absolutely a good thing there's nothing negative about this this is fantastic more people going to the movies to experience the movies, the movie theater industry getting to make a little bit of money, which is great. Which, by the way, one other thing I want to point out, though, that for this quarter that AMC has seen a rise in ticket sales and a rise in concession sales, guess what? They still are showing a loss. They still lost, I think it was $50 million that, that quarter. So they still have a ways to go. They still have a ways to go. But at least they're seeing things starting to turn around. And I think a lot of things are contributing to that. Number one... We're getting some big movies, which is great, but we are seeing higher end theaters. We are seeing more luxury experiences. We're having more comfortable environments to watch our movies. And maybe most significantly is the fact that now we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I, I can't remember if they've cracked a million yet or not of people now that we have these movie passes that I can go to more movies now without worrying about how much it's going to cost me to go. And then I can use that extra money to buy some popcorn or whatever. And it's all working. It's a win for us. It's a win for the movie theaters. So is this just a fluke? Maybe. We might get into the next quarter and we might get into 2020 and we might see another downturn. We might. But if this is because of the increase of the theater going experience, and if it is because of the great convenience that these movie passes give us, then we might see this become a new uptick. I still, though, worry that these movie theaters are going to look at this minor uptick and go, oh, we don't have to reduce the number of trailers and we don't have to try to find ways that we can reduce the cost of people coming to the movie. I still would encourage movie theaters, keep pushing, do better, and make the overall movie going experience, which includes how many trailers we got to sit through and commercials, how much it costs us to buy our tickets, work with the studios, keep working, and maybe we'll see this slow uptick start to turn into a big curve up. Here's hoping, because I love the movie going experience. Anyway, guys, what do you think about that report? Do you think that's exciting news? Do you think maybe it's a minor blip? Do you think this is a sign of great things to come? Do you think maybe it's just a fluke? Jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys.